Today, we reach a new height in our never-ending quest to do spectacular and improbable upgrades that nobody ever asked for. We're taking this already maxed out G4 Molar Mac and we're going to upgrade the non-upgradable internal graphics to the point where we should be able to do something ridiculous, like play Minecraft. But can we really do the impossible with just a bit of bodging and a guide published during the dark ages of the internet, 2006? I have no idea, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy putting blood, sweat, and tears into upgrading vintage machines to many, many times their original power and literal fractions of the speed of a modern smartphone, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. This is my latest obsession, my G4 powered Molar Mac. And I've set myself a special challenge for today's episode. I think we've really seen past this thing's questionable design and found a really special capable Macintosh within. I'm not going to call this thing hideous, not even once. So this machine started life as a 233 megahertz PowerPC G3 all in one, easily Apple's most aesthetically challenged Macintosh design. It only lasted nine months on the market and was never sold direct to consumers, officially. At its heart, it's Apple's pro-level Power Mac G3 with nearly all the same power and upgradability, paired with a glorious built-in 15-inch color display that goes all the way up to 1024 by 768. Of course, whoever designed the case obviously phoned it in at 4 p.m. on a Friday. Probably as a joke. Hey, I didn't say the H word, but oh sweet Spindler, is this an awesome machine? Nearly any upgrade that would fit in Apple's Pro Power Macs of the time also fits in this Molar Mac, including that incredible one gigahertz G4 that we've kitted this thing out with already. It's just hard to imagine that there was a time you could open up your Mac and, theoretically at least, quadruple its performance with a slot in user-friendly upgrade. The only thing you couldn't really upgrade in the Molar Mac that you could in a normal Power Mac was the video. Here, let me crack the back open and show you what I mean. So in the back of our Mac here, in the handy pull-out drawer, we have three PCI slots here, which is where you would normally want to put a video card, but the video for the internal monitor actually comes out of here. This is the G3's personality card, and all the different Power Mac G3 models had one, to give the different variations their personalities. And the all-in-one variation has two connectors. This is for a lot of the functionality like the volume buttons on the front, but also two of these wires have to do with video. And then there is a separate video connector right here. So what we're gonna do today basically is mod this internal monitor to a VGA connector using this, a VGA to BNC cable, and this IDE extension cable, which conveniently is the same connector and pin count as the personality car connector, paired with the coming use of this and this. And in the end, we should be able to plug this Radeon 9200 into the internal monitor to give us a nice 128 megs of VRAM up from the stock two megabytes that this thing had, and hopefully allow us to play Minecraft. And just why would we wanna play Minecraft on a mid 90s education market beige all-in-one Macintosh? Well, uh, the sponsor of today's video is PCBWay. PCBWay is your go-to source for more than just PCB production and prototyping, offering 3D printing, CNC machining, and even sheet metal fabrication. And you're just in time for PCBWay's Christmas sale with huge discounts and coupons, plus a free prototype for a Christmas themed design up to a $20 discount. Get started with a PCB order for only $5. If you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope you give PCBWay.com a try. Okay, now in order to do this, we're going to have to cut up this cable 
snip off all the ends here. And there's two wires that we need off of this thing. So uh, yeah, let's get a little closer and yeah, pull up that PDF file from 2006 and see if we can't make this happen. And thank you so much for everyone who pointed me to this document after the last video, The Misadventures of Shane Kurd, where he goes into detail about what exactly needs to be modified using these cables <laughs> to get the video to work. And according to this guide, the first thing we need to do is modify this VGA to BNC connector here, which just takes a VGA signal and splits it up among these cables here for a BNC monitor. So we are going to snip the leads off and then strip these down to the two wires inside and tin them with a soldering iron. Okay, now using a multimeter in continuity or beep beep mode, I'm just gonna check that the pins in this connector match up with the colors on these wires here because pin one, two, and three should be RGB in that order. So the first one should be R and indeed it is. So H sync is pin 13. Okay, so gray is H sync and yep, black is V sync. Okay, so now we need to cut up this IDE extender cable, which is gonna go onto our AIO connector because wire 12 on here is V-Sync and wire 14 on here is H-Sync. So what we need to do is count in from the side opposite of the red line, the red wire, and uh, yeah, cut those wires. All right, so I've soldered on two little extender wires here, black and gray, well, white, to match H-Sync and V-Sync, which will correspond to little wires we're gonna put on here. Now, the way the internal connector goes, it's just BGR up top and then ground for the three on the bottom and the right four aren't used. And in fact, there's no wire coming off of those from the back of the, uh, the cable there. So what we're going to do, since I don't have a six pin connector that would fit, we'll go with the cunning use of little bits of colored wire. All right, so here are our two extremely janktastic cables. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know that I've ever done anything to this level of jank, but hey, if it works, it works. Let's give it a shot. So first, I'm gonna take out the personality card. And we're gonna punch out the little opening here for what would be the modem, except we're gonna run a VGA cable through it. Now we can hook our cables up and uh, yeah, our extension cable goes on this guy here, plugs into the AIO card here. Now I'll just run the uh, janky VGA cable through the back here. A little bit of tape for extra jank. Make sure they don't come apart. And now we can put in our video card and connect to it from the back. Oh yeah, that is beautifully janky. 
Okay, so I've got this Dell monitor hooked up to the external video port of the built-in video in the all-in-one because we're probably gonna have to tell Mac OS to use the new graphics card as the primary graphics card because by default, it'll probably try to make this the secondary monitor. <laughs> so yeah, it's plugged in. I'm very nervous about this because there are wires everywhere inside this machine now. Here goes nothing. Well, it chimed. I've got a faint image of something that's not quite right. Hmm. Holy crap, no, look. It's working. The geometry's wrong, but it's working. <laughs> and it chose that as the internal display, I guess. At least Mac OS X did. Oh my God, it is really working. Look, both screens are up. But yeah, internal video, Mac OS X understands which screen should be the default. All right, let's go into Mac OS 9 and try to fix the geometry. Now, oh, don't worry about this screen. This screen is janky. So I wonder if Mac OS 9 is gonna pick this as the primary screen and we'll have to change it there. No, I think it's figured it out. Okay, well, evidently Mac OS 9 does not like this setup. So I'm going to reconnect the internal video, remove the new video card, and ex post facto this thing back into Mac OS X. Haha, <laughs> look, it's booted from the internal monitor connected to the external video port. That's ridiculous. I just cannot believe that this is working. <laughs> the geometry needs to be adjusted a little bit and I can't get into Mac OS 9 with the card installed to adjust it. But that, uh, that's a minor problem. Let's see what it says in System Profiler. Oh yeah, Radeon 9200, 128 megs of RAM. Now, one quirk of this is that the inbuilt video is always going to be enabled. So <laughs> we could do mirror displays, but I think that has a pretty big performance hit. So we just have to kind of live with a phantom display to the right here, which is always going to eat our mouse if we move too far over that way. I've read some stuff where people have tried to fix this and fully disable the onboard video, but yeah, I don't know if that's going to work. Okay, now the big thing, of course, if you remember last time, Minecraft would not even launch because it did not have enough video RAM Let's see what we can do now. Oh my God. <laughs> That's Minecraft 189 trying to launch. <laughs> oh my God. Well, he's trying. <laughs> look, oh my God, look at, look. That's insane. Minecraft 189. Can I go full screen? Yes. <laughs> it's Minecraft 189 full screen on the G3 all in one. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And it's running pretty well. Let's see what happens when we get in game. All right, well, it took a few minutes to actually generate the world, but look, we're in. Oh, that frame rate is not good, <laughs> but we are in kind of a busy area here. Hey, a pig. Hello, pig. Let's see if we can get out of this area <laughs> and get a better frame rate. And it crashed. <laughs> All right, I cannot believe how well this worked. We have massively upgraded graphics in a machine that was never ever intended to have any upgraded graphics at all. <laughs> 128 megs of VRAM and it plays Minecraft. Not particularly well, but it played it until it crashed. But that's something that we can fix because I'm kind of wondering, could this thing run 10.5 Leopard or even Sorbet Leopard? And also, now that we've hacked into the display system here, 
I wonder what other kinds of weird shenanigans are possible. I am very sorry, but I do wonder if we can do an ultimate motherboard swap in this thing with the guts of an M1 Mac Mini. But those questions will have to wait for later because I'm going to call this video here. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this chaos, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Rut K Mods, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, and Sutek, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.